welcome. Today's video is mainly a geometric series video, but since the problem starts off with the rubber ball being dropped, we're going to make it a physics video. So it truly is just a geometric series video and you don't actually need to know any physics to solve it, but it's important to see the beauty in series and the connection between series and science. So that's why we're going to talk about this today. In this problem, a rubber ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters. Each time the ball bounces, it returns to half of its height. What is the total distance the ball travels by the time it comes to rest? So originally, the ball is dropped from 10 meters. So how long does it take to hit the ground? Doesn't matter here. We could figure that out, but this isn't really a physics problem. This is more of a geometric series problem. It travels a distance of 10 meters that's stated and then when it bounces it'll go 5 meters up 5 meters down for a total of 10 meters after that the ball will bounce it'll go up 2.5 meters and it'll drop 2.5 meters for a total of 5 meters then it'll go up 1.25 meters and drop 1.25 meters for a total of 2.5 meters and this will continue on and on and on forever so what is the total distance the ball travels by the time it comes to rest in order to solve this we have to add every single one of these terms together till infinity. If we look at these terms, we notice the f these two terms are both 10 meters. We're going to have to think about how we're going to handle that. Well, this part here, this 10 meter drop, is different from all the rest in the sense that all the rest of the terms are a sum of the up of the rise and the fall of the bouncing ball whereas the first one is just the drop so in order to properly handle this this 10 meters here will completely be separate from the rest of the sequence or the series and it will be added to the sum of the series once we determine what that is so this will just be a something we add later and we're actually gonna start right here on the first time the ball hits the ground and starts bouncing. So what I've done here is I've simply taken the units off of the numbers and I pulled the numbers out so we can look at each one individually. We're gonna start it kinda like you would if you were considering making a graph or something. We're gonna start here at zero and we're gonna consider every integer value onward and 10 here will be our first output and then 5 will be our second output 2.5 will be our third output and it'll give us some sort of relationship so we're gonna call this one 0 this will be the 0 term this will be the first term the second term and the third term now we want to ask ourselves can we find a pattern here the pattern here is fairly simple to recognize. Each term is multiplied by one half to get the next term. 10 times one half is five. Five times one half is 2.5. 2.5 times one half is 1.25. So there is a pattern. This one half we call the common ratio. So R is equal to one half. So let's describe this interaction between this first 10 and this next 5 here. So 10 times 1 half is equal to 5. Now I want to also describe 10 to 2.5. How, how does that relationship occur? Well that'll be 10 times 1 half, which is 5 times one-half that's going to be 2.5 so I could also express 1.25 as 10 times one-half 
times one half times one half and that'll be equal to 1.25 notice here that we place these numbers next to these terms 0 1 2 and 3 look at the 1 as you look at the uh, the number of one halves we have, we have one one half. Then look at the two here. As we look at the number of terms we have, we have two one halves. Two of them. As we look at the number three for 1.25, we have three one halves. There's three of them. So, thinking about that, let's rewrite these. And let's look at this one here and the operation that's done on it. Well, it's going to be 10 times 1 half to the 0 power, right? Because 1 half to the 0 is 1, 10 times 1 is 10. So we could even express the first term as 10 times 1 half to the 0 power. So, if k is equal to these numbers here, 0, 1, 2, and 3, then we now have all, all the things we need in order to describe this as a geometric series. Alright, so I hope that kind of describes what's really going on in this series. Now, in calculus you learn about geometric series and you know they're in the form of the sum, so k starts at zero, to infinity, if we're talking about an infinite geometric series, it's going to be a r to the k. And we know this series converges. The series converges if the absolute value of r is less than 1. So if r is less than 1 or greater than negative 1, the series will converge. This is great because in this problem we have our r is one half well one half is less than one the absolute value of one half is less than one so the series converges so when you look back at this expression here this funny looking e means to add all of these terms together and it says to start at zero and go to infinity we know r is one half what is a well, a is going to be, in this case, 10. So let's take a look at that. The sum k at 0 to infinity of 10. Now r is 1 half, and that's going to be to the k. What values would we get? If k was 0, then 1 half to the 0 is 1. 1 times 10 is 10. If k is 1, 10 times 1 half to the first is 5. If k is 2, 10 to the 1 half squared. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. 10 times 1 fourth is 2.5. And if k was 3, 1 half cubed is 1 eighth. 10 times 1 eighth is 1.25. And all of these numbers will continue to add. Is this identical to the series we're dealing with? Yes. So this is what we want to use. Now don't forget we still have this initial drop of 10 meters. And what we'll literally do is just add it to whatever this sum is. Alright, so if you knew all this stuff about geometric series, then you would know the sum of the series is a over 1 minus r. And remember, this only is true if the absolute value of r is less than 1, because then the series will converge to a value. This value is given by this uh, formula here in which I will not prove in this video. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate it. And notice, though, if you knew how this kind of worked from the get-go, you knew you would have added 10 meters to your expression, and half of its height would tell you one half. And once you realized it was a geometric series, you should have been able to solve it fairly quickly, and you could get to this stage almost instantly and pretty much solve this problem in your head. But let's go ahead and evaluate it. So A is equal to 10 and R is equal to 1 half. Now whenever you're solving these geometric series make special note of where the index begins and it needs to begin at 0. Okay, so let's evaluate. So the sum of the series is equal to A 10 over 1 minus R 1 half which is equal to 10 over 1 half which is equal to 20. So the value the series reaches is 20. 20 meters. And the initial drop was 10 meters. So the total distance the ball travels is the initial 10 meter drop and the 20 meters for all the bouncing for a total of 30 meters. So if a rubber ball is dropped from a height of 10 meters, each time the ball bounces it returns to half of its height. What is the total distance the ball travels by the time it comes to rest? Through geometric series we are able to show that the total distance the ball travels before rest is 30 meters. If any of this was difficult, make sure you review your knowledge of series and remember that physics is truly like a manifestation of mathematics and in order, in order to understand physics truly you need to have a good understanding of mathematics as well so if there's any holes in your mathematics I urge you to try to patch those thank you for watching I hope you join me in future videos